Hello there everybody, welcome back to my From the Depths tutorial series. Now today I'm going to be talking about uh, custom cannons and how to hook up your custom cannons to the AI mainframe so that the AI can control them. And this will apply not only to custom cannons, but to laser turrets, to uh, any kind of simple weapons here, or missiles. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Um, the very you need a, three things to have uh, a custom cannon. This is excluding the, the AI control. You need a firing piece, which is this block right here. And you need at least one barrel block, as well as some kind of internal ammo supply connected up to the firing piece, either directly or through the use of these um, connectors. There's different kind of connectors. That's a little bit more advanced, and I'll be talking about that um, a little bit later in this video. But for now, this right here is essentially your basic cannon. Now there's different types of barrels um, that do different things, but for right now, just barrel. That's what I'm using right now. I threw in a couple extra blocks just, uh, just for shits and giggles, because it helps accuracy and stuff like that. But since there's no other advanced components, this is not a very good custom cannon. It's just the most basic that I can build, essentially. So, I am just going to spawn in a couple sea vipers. And you will see that the AI will detect those ships and will begin firing upon them. Albeit very slowly and not with very powerful weapons, or accurately. But, it has started shooting on its own accord. See, I am not touching anything. So, that's all well and dandy, right? But, uh, what if you want something a little bit bigger? Now, I... This is mounted on the turret, just so you know. I will show you how to do that as well. Um, but just for just for now, we're just for focusing on this cannon itself. And remember, just a firing piece, a barrel, and some kind of ammo supply. The ammo box, which is found right, right here. Ammo box. You got your firing piece, and you've got your barrel. That will form you your most basic cannon. Now I'm just gonna wipe the floor with these uh, those enemy ships out there. Just gonna turn my uh, my laser turret on, and it'll just uh, mop them up really quick. And then I will uh, get a little bit more advanced with the custom cannons and uh, show you how to connect them. I shall probably show you how to connect them and then um, get a little more advanced with it. But uh, yeah, all right. So that guy is basically dead. Just to finish him off, come on. Alright. Receiving turned off. Perfect. Okay, now if we head over here, there's a two different ways to connect up a turret to the mainframe. You can do it either directly, which I've actually done right here. Um, this block right here is the AI mainframe, and this, these are AI connectors. You find them... Uh, Right here, you have different types of connectors for different, um, for you know, for different uh, needs that you have. I almost always use AI six-way connectors, and that's what these blocks are here that go all the way over to this block, which is a local weapon controller. Now, if we go to the local weapon controller, mouse over it. Now, my face cam may be in the way because it's on the top right, but. The description is, this controller will fire weapons and turrets connected to any of its six size, sides rather, with a range of two blocks, i.e. 12 blocks total are checked for weapons, as long as targets have been detected and or tracked by the associated mainframe. Meaning, you know, a, the mainframe has to know they're there, the, a, the local weapon controller has to be connected to the, way, what may we, the, the mainframe, blah. To control the rotation of a turret as well as the weapons on the turret, place this on the main vehicle next to the turret or below it. And that's what we have here. I placed the local weapon controller, and then I put the turret block right on top of that. And then I added the um, a wood block just to rest it on. Now you can make multi-barrel turrets using this method by expanding this out, but uh, don't concern yourself with that, that a bit yet. Just focus on mastering small, basic custom cannons. You gotta get the fundamentals down before you expand on bigger and better things. 
might be a little bit impatient, but it's very important that you like, get the basics down. And then from there, you can build on it and build amazing things. Now, th another way to hook this up to the mainframe, which I have examples of over there, and actually my laser turret that you saw in the um, my laser tutorial video is also connected up this way. It's connected up wirelessly. To do that, you need a wireless transmitter, which is uh, right here. They need to be connected to the mainframe. And um, if you mouse over it, transmitting on channel one. There are different channels that it can transmit on. All well and good. And then, of course, over here, you're going to have uh, your wireless receivers, which are very similar. You have to have them set to the same channel. I just have these um, on a different channel just so they weren't shooting, so I can just show you the cannon. But if I wanted to activate this, all I have to do is uh, flip this on. It is now re receiving on channel 1, and then you saw it flipped over to connected to mainframe in case you missed that. Let's flip it over. No mainframe connection ensures there's a transmitter on the same channel. Boom! Connected to mainframe. There you go. And so you have to have the AI mainframe blocks, like the, the connector blocks, hooking up to your local weapon controller. And then when you mouse over this, it says it is connected to mainframe. And if I flip the channel, fuck, there we go, off, it will flip over shortly to no mainframe connection. So there you have it. So now this is connected up. I am actually just going to... Oh, uh, fucking that guy can shoot. But I will spawn in another little ship, another Sea Viper. And now this simple missile turret, while it's not very good, is now firing on the enemy. Like, seriously, I would not recommend using these in any way, shape, or form unless you have a shit ton of them. And even then, you'd be better off using that space for something more advanced, like, uh, like actual missile blocks. But, there you have it proof that this works. And this right here is really simple. You can you can kind of have this going out in any direction you want as long as the, um, the receiver will connect up to the local weapon controller in some way. So that's all well and good. That's all pretty cool shit. Now excuse me as I run over here and just uh, toggle on this turret. And see, I have the exact same setup here that I'm using. I... I have the wireless uh, receiver, and I've got the hey, the, uh, the connector blocks running up to the local weapon controller, which is actually in line with all those wood blocks. That's what the turret is sitting on. See, local weapon controller. Local weapon controller right there with the turret. And then, of course, all the laser components that I talked about in the other video. <sighs> so if you're interested in more about lasers and you didn't watch it, I would recommend it. Uh, lasers are a lot of fun. They take up a lot of power, but... They do a shit ton of damage, if you build them right. But, so, time to start expanding on this little turret. You're not going to go with anything too fancy, but um, you saw how slow it was firing. It wasn't firing all that fast, so we're actually just going to uh, head over here. We're going to grab the six-way connectors, because they're my favorite. Why limit yourself if you don't have to? And we're just going to do a little something like this. Make it a little bit bigger. Um, we're going to give it some more ammo. I'm going to put the ammo on the inside. And then, if you want to increase your fire rate, you need auto loaders. Now, auto loaders, the description is basically the same except it adds on. This remarkable auto loader reduces reload time for each ammo box that is connected to it. Place it on the firing piece or on a connector. They will accept up to three ammo boxes, and also acts as a mount for warheads. Now warheads are these things right here. These are a little bit more advanced, and I'll be talking about them a bit later, but just know that um, they're basically ammo boxes-ish kind of thing, but will do like change the damage type to armor piercing or explosive. So I guess it's not that complicated, but we will concern ourselves with that a little bit later. Just for right now, let's grab some of these... Um, just automatic orientation, just to keep it simple. Uh, back to full select, ammo box. And then, of course, as you probably have found out, those little green indicators show where you can attach up the ammo box to. So we'll just load it up there. Da -da -da. And screw it, we'll just do some on the bottom too. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're building these turrets, especially if it's not an azimuth only, meaning, again, it can only spin around on the, um, the horizontal plane, can't go vertical, this turret will now have trouble looking up. Because as soon as it impacts the deck, or something, it can't go any further. Just something to keep in mind, you have to build your turrets. You know, just keep, uh, keep the design in mind, what you intend to use it for. If you want it to be an anti-air turret, you know, make, try to build up. and You know, just use common sense. <clears throat> Alright, so we have these autoloaders in place. We will spawn in another little sea viper. And you see it is no... Fuck! No! I'm so sorry! I didn't disable the laser turret. Alright, there we go. It's now turned off. But it's okay. It's basically dead. I'll spawn another sea viper. It's all good. This turret will also probably have trouble uh, looking left to right. But uh, it's okay. We love him anyway. Even though he's a little bit special. You see, it's trying to look... Oh, there it goes. And as soon as it gets a good angle on it that it can use, it will start to fire. And notice the, the much increased fire rate that it has now. Actually, I'm going to check the ammo on this thing. If, to check the stats on any of your turrets, just um, look at the, the firing piece. It'll give you all sorts of information of what it is. Yeah, this is not very accurate at all. This is more of a spray and prey kind of turret. But now you have a turret that uh, it doesn't do any more damage per shot. But you have a lot more shots going out at the same time. And it's not very accurate, but you have a lot more volume going out. It's just uh, the machine gun approach. So yeah, that's all pretty good. We'll just let it continue to fire. I had to turn down my volume because... Uh, so, actually, I, w I am going to end this guy. Fuck! I keep falling off. Gosh darn it. Alright, so we're just gonna oh, turn that on. The laser turret will mop that guy up, no problem. He's already dead. That will disable him. I guess I can't. But, um, there you go. That's a lot higher of a fire rate. So that's all pretty good. So now, I'm going to uh, hack off some of this stuff that uh, I don't really want. Get this turret. There we go. We're going to make it a little bit better now. And uh, you by no means have to copy what I'm doing here. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. As long as you follow the basic rules that I've been, I'm setting out for you guys, you'll be just fine. Like, uh, there's endless combinations of things that you can do to build your own turrets how you want them. So, be free, experiment, do your own thing, it'll be great. So say you want to build something that will, um, has a little bit more freedom of movement, but you also want a lot of shit. So I'm just gonna add in the ammo boxes and some of the auto loaders that I talked about already, so just, uh, Never mind this, but now I'm going to be showing you something called a gauge increase. Now gauge increases increases the, the gauge of your cannon. You'll visibly see it get bigger. And uh, with size, it uses more ammo, but it does a lot more damage. Uh, it also slows down the fire rate, I believe. I'd have to double check that. But, um, yeah. So you kind of have to decide, do you want fire rate and, um, but lower damage, or do you want just some heavy hitting, like, really powerful turrets to blast through heavy armor? That's up to you. You can also add these armor piercing warheads. But, yes, gauge increases. Here we go. So just kind of, uh, look at the size of the barrel now. Let's get rid of that. You see it visibly get bigger. There, I'll do it over here. And it can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Here, we'll just make it just massive-ish. Like, I have some really big turrets that I have, but that is a hell of a lot bigger than it was before. Uh, so you can see exactly how crazy this can really get if you stack up a lot of them. There is a limit. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what that limit is. But just know you can make your turrets pretty freaking massive. 
and it's all a lot of fun. Goodness. Alright. <clears throat> so don't mind me, just kind of... I'm just throwing shit in randomly at the moment. Don't mind me too much. I'm also going to add in some of these explosive warheads. Now, well first of all, let's look at this. We now see that it does 140 explosive damage. It wasn't there before. Here, let me get rid of them really quick. Look at it again. Zero explosive damage. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, also, you'll notice, if you looked before, it does a lot more kinetic damage. That's just sheer impact damage. But, let's go ahead and spawn in another another vehicle. Another Sea Viper. And let's also kind of play around with the barrels really quick. Uh, your barrel... You have different inaccuracy modifiers, stuff like that. Um, recoil suppression, it decreases the, the recoil, as you might guess. It's good if you have a ship that's bucking around a lot when you're firing. Flash suppression, I don't really see any use for this. It just makes it more stealthy. Motor-driven barrel. When placed directly in front of the firing piece, it will increase, increase the arc of fire of the weapon. Um, meaning it can look around more. Elevation barrel. These are really good for building turreted anti-air and artillery as it says, as it will increase the arc of fire of the weapon in the vertical, meaning it will be able to look up and down much further. But I'm just going to add in some of these motor driven barrels. There we go. And you'll notice also when I add more barrels, it'll become a lot more accurate. <laughs> and look at the size of those shells now. It's a lot bigger. And it does a lot more damage, and it was actually able to really easily destroy that little sea viper that I spawned in. Let's spawn in a couple more just to watch it get wrecked. Another little fun thing, when you take... This is, doesn't have anything to do with AI, but when you take manual control of a turret, and you fire around, you can hold hit caps lock and it follows the round. Oh, see, that one just bounced off the water. So, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, if you've been following along, you now will be able to build a turret that does a lot more damage than it did before. You should also now know how to connect up your turrets, whether it be a laser, a custom cannon abomination thing like this. I have no idea what the fuck I built. Um... Or a simple weapon. You can use them with simple weapons, too. Just kind of experiment, now that you know the basics. Um, figure out what works in your different configurations, what doesn't work. It's just really up to your imagination to see what you can build. Uh, just follow the basic rules, though. Get the hang of it. And then everything will fall into place. Unfortunately, we did not have time to get into the missiles at all in this episode. It's... Um, this video is getting a little bit long, and I don't have time to talk about it in this episode. I really wanted to. I really did. But it's not going to happen. It'll be next week. It will be the missile special. But, yes. <sighs> Covered a decent amount of stuff. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, if you have any other ideas for things you want to learn how to do in From the Depths or another game, just let me know. I'm happy to do a tutorial video, and a little off topic, but I do have a Twitch channel now, which I will link in the description if you're interested in following me on there. I will be starting to do live streams pretty soon. So, with all of that being said, thank you all very much for watching, and I'm going to throw on a bunch more of these gauges just for shits and giggles. And until next time, this is Ryan from Strom Bully Games signing off. Thanks for watching.